なんね。Very different angle, a lot of different things happening today. We are also resurrecting the Katniss breed from so many years ago. So, yeah, new angle of sorts, mostly because I just didn't want to sit on the floor to take out stuff from the owl and then get up and grab the books. So, here we are. I'm making being able to stand up in a video work for me. Anyway, this is going to be round three of review we read on haul. So I'm going to be once again choosing five different uh, book prompts from my reading owl over here um, and basically decide if I'm going to review the book if I've already read it or put it on my TBR to read or reread if I don't know enough to review it. Or, last option, if I'm really just not wanting to read it anymore and can't review it or don't want to review it, then we can maybe unhaul the dang thing because maybe we just don't need that book anymore. <laughs> and this has just been an, also just an, a good way for me to do some low-key reviews for the channel and also just pick some TBR choices. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's been a good uh, experiment all around so far for me. Um, and so far I have been able to review a few books, uh, read a lot of books last month because I think everything went on the TBR for April. Um, technically one was reviewed but I still put it on the TBR to reread it and then everything else like I chose to reread. Apart from the fact that I did choose to switch from uh, reading to unhauling for one title. Um, simply because I was just like, you know, I was going to go ahead and, re and read this because it was so short, but and I was like, but why? Why do I, why would I put myself through reading it just because it's short when I've lost interest in, in that particular subject? So anyway, I'm babbling. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pick the titles and go from there and yeah. You can also take a look at the past two rounds to get a better idea of like rules and stuff, but there's not a whole lot of rules to this. <laughs> not really. <laughs> anyway. And I've actually uh, made a point of updating the owl. Like 90% of the way I have gotten rid of all, pretty much everything that I unhauled. It's just a matter of putting in some of the newer titles for now. This baggie just pretty much just keeps my spare post-its for creating new slips and then the um, recent pulls from this experiment as well. So the first one is Ballet Shoes, which I have actually read. Next one, Final Girls. Fandom series, but at this point, um, even though the jar has titles that I don't yet have in my collection, I'm not going to be using those for my personal part of the challenge at the moment. Another one that I may not have. Always Never Yours. I actually do have this one, so I haven't updated that I've gotten this yet, okay?
Number four. Oh boy, it's another ebook one. That's another thing that I've been getting better with working on, going through my ebooks that just sit there for nothing. All my friends are dead. <laughs> One last one. Another one I own. As old as time, yay! I'm waiting for that one to come up. <laughs> anyway, there's the five. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the books off my shelves and go on ahead and get into it. <laughs> Alright, so I've gathered all of the books that we have for reviewing slash TBR on hauling. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, first off we're of course starting with the ballet shoes, or just ballet shoes <laughs> to be accurate. Um, this particular copy I obtained secondhand, and it actually ended up being a Folio Society edition, so that's fancy. <laughs> anyway, let me it out here so you can actually kind of see the book instead of just this plain purple cover. That's the only sad part. It's like the outside cover is like me. Anyway. <laughs> So this is the front cover that we have, which is an illustration of the three main characters, and then we have just ballet slippers on the back. And let's see here. Let's see what's going about this. Okay. So I'm going to try and be better about actually like reading through descriptions before I just go into stuff. Um, but anyway, this one does not have a description in it, so I'm just kind of kind of wing it because there's not a whole lot to this. <laughs> anyway, um, so Ballet Shoes I have actually read. Um, this first came to my knowledge from, of course, the adaptation that Emma Watson was a part of back in like 2007, right around the time of Order of the Phoenix, I believe. Um, and so I actually watched the adaptation first. That was the first I'd heard of the story uh, personally, way back when it was fairly new. Um, and then ended up just stumbling across this at the clearance section of Second and Charles. I'm like, is that the same ballet shoes? And it was. So I had to grab a copy to be like, let's see what the actual story is like. Um, and apparently it is part of a series of uh, children's books, but this is still the only one I have personally read. Um, not really sure if I will necessarily continue the series simply because I don't like really have a whole lot of personal attachment uh, to it beyond just oh yeah there was that adaptation that Emma Watson was in and it was a cute story but at my age I just don't think I'll really be pursuing it further at this point that may change <laughs> anyway the whole story revolves around the three fossil girls uh, and that is Pauline, Posey, and Rosie. I believe Posey is actually the first one. No. Hold on. Let me double check on this. So I think Pauline is actually the first one. Wow, I'm getting things way off. I fail. Really bad. It's Petrova. Not Rosie. So Pauline, Petrova, and Posey. Wow. I don't know why I failed that so hard. I shouldn't know that better. But anyway. So yeah, the three fossil girls, Pauline, Petrova, and Posey. Um, basically, it starts off with... Um, God, why 
why am I forgetting all of the characters' names? Let's see how well this is stuff. At least in my defense, this character isn't super active in the story. Right, so I knew it was something odd. So basically, the um, their father of sorts, adoptive father, is called Gum, which is um, an acronym for Great Uncle Matthew, uh, basically. So um, Gum basically had a whole bunch of fossils in his house he was obsessed with looking for fossils, would always go on these long trips, and at one point um, ends up bringing home a baby from one of these trips. And so basically adopts the baby, and um, his daughter or granddaughter um, actually ends up taking care of the baby while he is off on other trips along with like her nanny from growing up. So. Basically, he stumbles into being the parent for these three orphaned girls in various ways. And when they're still pretty small, like maybe toddler age at best for some of them, um, he goes on like one of the longest trips and basically just advises his granddaughter that, you know, all of the money that they'll need, we'll have it all in this account, I'll be sending whatever you guys need, but it'll be a hot minute before I'm back. And so basically the whole story centers around them growing up and just basically going through life um, with this strange sort of family they've put together. and. None of them really like remembers Gum because he ends up being gone for so long, like years and years at this point. And it basically deals with the fact that he's been gone for so long that the money is running out and they're trying to figure out what to do. So they end up um, bringing in a bunch of boarders so that they can help pay for things and so some of the boarders end up helping out with the girls. Um, so, like there's a pair of women that end up being their teachers. Um, there's another lady who moves in who is a dance teacher and so she kind of gets them scholarships into this dance school and that's where the whole ballet shoes part comes in where basically once they've graduated from this school and start working, sometimes working even before they leave the school, the school is basically going to recoup some of the scholarship by getting some of their wages. And basically just seeing how the three of them grow up and learn dancing and just going through things in general during the era of like the Great Depression. So it's very cute, it's very simple. I have some, like if I come across it personally, I don't know how attached I would personally feel to it, but there is a little bit of an attachment just because like Emma Watson is eternally connected to this for me, okay? This is an Emma Watson stand account right here for life. Because you can't tell there's a lot of, well, maybe not as much Harry Potter stuff on this particular shelf. The one shelf lower we have all of all of the things for Harry Potter and my current books for this blocking the view. So this has gone great. <laughs> Here we go. You all approve. We got a newts diploma, okay? There we go. Check out Book Rose Readathons, man. This is going well. But anyway, this of course has been a review of sorts. <laughs> kind of. Anyway. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say about this one. There's not really a whole lot that I have to say about how good or bad it is. It's just a cute kids book, honestly. 
and you should watch the adaptation. So next we have, of course, Final Girls by Riley Sager. Sager? I've heard it pronounced both ways, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> And this is actually a book that first came across um, through Emma Books. Um, because she also has a fair amount of the Riley Sager books, as I, of course, also do now. I think I've got like four or five of them. I've got Final Girls, The Last Time I Lied, uh, Lock Every Door, Home Before Dark, I want to say there's one more, but that's the only one that I'm seeing at the moment. So yeah. So far I've only read um, The Last Time I Lied, which was very interesting on its own since it gave me a lot of flashbacks to my um, yearly trips to a girls camp through my church for like five, six years. Of course, not ending with like murder and stuff, but... It was nice to kind of go back and like, I was able to easily picture things because I related it all to that like camp experience. There we go. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that book, we're here to talk about this one. Which as I said I have not read yet actually. Um, anyway. So, the summary says, 10 years ago, college student Quincy Carpenter went on vacation with five friends and came back alone, the only survivor of a horror movie scale massacre. In an instant, she became a member of a club no one wants to belong to, a group of similar survivors known in the press as the Final Girls. Lisa, who lost nine sorority sisters to a college dropout's knife. Sam, who went up against the sack man during her shift at the Nightlight Inn, and now Quincy, who ran bleeding through the woods to escape Pine Cottage and the man she refers to only as him. The three girls are all attempting to put their nightmares behind them and, with that, one another. Despite the media's attempts, they will never meet. They never meet. Now Quincy is doing well, maybe even great, thanks to her Xanax prescription. She has a caring, almost fiancé Jeff, a popular baking blog, a beautiful apartment, and a therapeutic presence in Coop, the police officer who saved her life all those years ago. Her memory won't even allow her to recall the events of that night. The past is in the past. That is, until Lisa, the first final girl, is found dead in her bathtub, wrists slit, and Sam the second appears on Quincy's doorstep. Blowing through Quincy's life like a whirlwind, Sam seems intent on making Quincy relive the past with increasingly dire consequences, all of which makes Quincy question whether why Sam has sought her out. And when new details about Lisa's death come to light, Quincy's life becomes a race against time as she tries to unravel Sam's truths from her lies evade the police and hungry reporters, and most crucially, remember what happened at Pine Cottage before what was started 10 years ago is finished. So, honestly, I'm not sure if I've fully read that description before now. I just have heard a lot about the book from Emma's channel. <laughs> um, but it's, I enjoyed the other Riley Sager book, and so, they overall have seemed like lighter thriller books to me so far, if this is like on par with the other one. So this will actually be going on my May TBR. Next we have Always Never Yours by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegmund Broca. And this is another one that I came across through Emma Books. This is a popular thing on my bookshelf. Things happen, okay? We all have booktubes. It's people that we follow very religiously, okay? Anyway, as I was saying, Always Never Yours, which I came across through Emma Books at some point. And so this particular one I also have not read yet, but it is also a fairly recent um, resident of my shelves. Whereas Final Girls has been there for a hot minute for now. 
at least like probably two years anyway so the description for this book we have 17 year old Megan Harper is about due for her next sweeping romance it's inevitable each of her relationships starts with the perfect guy and ends with him falling in love with someone else but instead of feeling sorry for herself, Megan focuses on pursuing her next fling, directing theater, and fulfilling her dream college's acting requirement in the smallest role possible. So when she's cast as Juliet, yes that Juliet, in her high school's production, it's a complete nightmare. Megan's not an actress, and she's used to being upstage, both in and out of the theater. In fact, with her mom off in Texas and her dad remarried and on to baby number two with his new wife, Megan worries that just like her exes, her family is moving on without her. Then she meets Owen Okita, Okita? Um, an aspiring playwright inspired by Rosaline from Shakespeare's R and J. A character who, like Megan, knows a thing or two about short-lived relationships. Megan agrees to help Owen with his play in exchange for help catching the eye of a stagehand slash potential new boyfriend. Yet, Megan finds herself growing closer to Owen and wonders if he could be the Romeo she never expected. In their fresh and funny debut, Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegman Broca break down the high school drama to find there's always room for familial love, romantic love, and most importantly, self-love. So, anyway, main thing that I had kind of heard about prior was just, you know, the history of Pretty much everyone she had been in a relationship with ends up basically like finding their soulmate just after they date her. And so it just was one that was interesting and stuck with me for a hot minute and I was just anxious to get a copy to read. And now I'm finally gonna be able to get a chance to read it, so that's nice. So um, usually I film with my GoPro, but since we're having issues with some sort of choppy clicking noise in the background, I've been using my phone recently. We'll just save the GoPro for things out and about where I, I can only assume it's my computer at this point that's causing the issue. And since I'm filming in my office, my computer's pretty much always on and I'm not going to shut it off because lazy but also no <laughs> unless it's necessary it's not happening um yeah we are where we are anyway so i can't read descriptions for ebooks and whatever else um here but we we have a tablet instead so for book number four, we have All My Friends Are Dead, <laughs> um, which is just a book I bought for like two or three bucks on Kindle at some point. I blame BookBub, okay? Anyway, I've pretty much gotten to the point where I don't really purchase ebooks at all anymore now unless literally it... <laughs> If it's something super cheap that like I know I won't get a physical copy of for a while because the physical copy is like expensive or whatnot. Like I have the first book from the thousandth floor on ebook because I wasn't able to get a physical copy yet at the time and now I have the second two books. Well the second and third book I should say. So I don't have to necessarily wait a while if I do want to go ahead and start reading the series soon. That sort of thing, you know. Or like the North and South series because those are real chunker bricks of life. So yeah, it'd be easier to read them outside of the house on here. Because they heavy. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. I really should have put this up on Goodreads instead of just on my Kindle, but whatever. We're here now happening. We are where we are. And actually, while I have not technically read this yet, I have um, 
been read <laughs> a little bit of this because I'm pretty sure this is the one in the series that they were reading a few pages of at a time on the Tim Checker vlogs um, way back in like the vlogs from like 2011 maybe ish because I've been watching through their full backlist because I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Why am I watching 11 years of daily vlogs backlogged? Anyway, at least we're now in 2015. So I started off in 2009 and now we're here. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so um, I've he, they read a few pages from it on their vlogs, but they never actually finished it. I don't think. Could be wrong, because it was a while back in the vlog. <laughs> um, so anyway, the description as we have on Goodreads here. Uh, it says, an amusing and captivating tale that's a delightful primer for laughing at the inevitable. If you're a dinosaur, all of your friends are dead. If you're a pirate, all of your friends have scurvy. If you're a tree, all of your friends are end tables. Each page of this laugh out loud illustrated humor book showcases the downside of being everything from a clown to a cassette tape to a zombie. Cute and dark all at once, this hilarious children's book for adults teaches valuable lessons about life. From the sock whose only friends have gone missing to the houseplant whose friends are being slowly killed by irresponsible plant owners like you. All My Friends Are Dead presents hilariously entertaining stories about life and existential predicaments. The simple yet effective imagery, the personification of inanimate objects, and short hilarious quips come together to create an amusing adventure through each character's unique grievance and wide-eyed dilemmas. So that's it. And if you haven't guessed by now, this wall will be on my TBR for, for uh, May. The last book for this particular round of the challenge is going to be As Old As Time by Liz Braswell from the Twisted Tales Disney series of books. Um, I am not a hundred percent sure anymore how I first came across this book. I want to say I just randomly stumbled across it in the store and then just heard about it or other books in the series on booktube shortly afterwards but this has been on my bookshelf now for probably also like two or three years this one was pretty sure one of the like earlier picks from my like new bookshelf collection so to speak i have my old bookshelf collection which is anything prior to like booktube days basically or just like ones I've had since I lived with my parents or shortly thereafter in the first apartment that I lived in. Those are all like my original bookshelf, the OG books. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, pretty much um, there's a fairly decent amount of books in this series where basically everything on the book basically takes a twist on the regular Disney story that everyone's familiar with and runs with it basically. So I have a few of them of my own now at this point as well but this was the first one that I came across um, and it's of course based on Beauty and the Beast and this one is centered around the question of what if Belle's mother cursed the beast? So I'm very excited to um, finally get to read this because this is also one that I've been a year to get to and just hasn't gotten to the top of the TBR yet. Um, so yeah, I've got this one, A Whole New World, which is based on Aladdin. Um, and I think that one's If Jafar was the first one to rub the lamp and come across the genie instead of Aladdin himself. Um, and I also have The Unbirthday, which is about Alice. Though I forget what the twist part of that one is. And I have one for Frozen as well. Um, which I think is like if 
she had just kept her powers a secret. Like even from Anna when they were little or something. I don't really remember that. But that specific one was. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so yeah, the description for this particular one for Beauty and the Beast is uh, Bella's a lot of things, smart, resourceful, restless. She longs to escape her poor provincial town for good. She wants to explore the world despite her father's reluctance to leave their little cottage in case Belle's mother returns, a mother she barely remembers. Belle also happens to be the captive of a terrifying, angry beast, and that is her primary concern. But when Belle touches the beast's enchanted rose, intriguing images flood her mind, images of the mother she believed she would never see again. Stranger still, she sees that her mother is none other than the beautiful enchantress who, who cursed the beast, his castle, and all its inhabitants. Shocked and confused, Belle and the Beast must work together to unravel a dark mystery about their families that is 21 years in the making. So, I'm very excited. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites, so, I mean, yeah. We have a book lover, we have French. <laughs> if you didn't know me, there's, there's a lot of, um, French fanaticism in here. Yeah. And we have a guest, Miss Luna. What you doing, Luna? She always has like a history of photobombing my videos from ages ago, though it's been a while since you've done it now. Usually there was quite a while where she would just be headed over within about, used to be that within like 10 seconds of me turning on the camera, she'd be like, hey. <laughs> so she used to photobomb the beginning of all my videos, more or less. So yeah, it's been a minute. Anyway, that pretty much um, goes through everything for this round of the challenge. If you choose to also participate, let me know um, and we can, you know, see what books you ended up working through on your own shelf or just in general, talk with me about books that I ended up pulling for the challenge because there are some really good ones that I've been looking forward to getting to. Which is another part of just why I like doing this particular challenge for myself because it just gives me another chance to make sure that I'm working through my current books, which is another reason why I don't really go through ones that I don't have yet because for me personally, the main point is to get through my either by reading ones that I've been anxious to get to or actually going back and being like, yeah, I know I was interested in this when I looked into it initially, but I've lost interest or, oh dang, I did not take a close enough look at this book and it is not what I thought it was because <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's happened to me a few times. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and get on with the rest of my day with eating lunch, doing some stuff around the house. So yeah, I will see you on Tuesday for another uh, weekly vlog, reading vlog thing. And yeah, in the meantime, if you need me, I'll be reading. Oh,